Hello. Thank you for being with me. Um, the abolition of the soul, or should we say the repression of the soul. Very short paragraph on a book, uh, The Abolition of the Soul, written in French by a philosopher, Robert Redeker. Just one passage. There is an empty hole in our culture today, something that was there for millennia and there is no longer, something that went away, yet a thing to which we had become accustomed, a faithful and demanding companion to our existence. What word to use? A thing? an entity, a being, something that we held as part of ourselves, the most important part, the most intimate part, the true treasure of what we are. She's now gone. This thing flew away like a bird. This thing dissolved like a corpse that composes under the earth, delivered to the tenacious veracity of vermin. Was this thing murdered, as in the words of Nietzsche? God killed? Was she taken away to some forgotten prison so that we never again hear her speak? Will she ever return again? We feel it very clearly, something or someone who was as if attached to us and which has now been removed, something which the word itself gradually, like the word itself, gradually fades away. The word is the soul. Uh, I am reading this book. It's uh, it's a it's a great book. I, I I'm not going to use um, notes today because I want to to talk about this and what is happening in Israel and Gaza and Rafa, and uh, I just I just want to let it go. See 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 what happens here. It looks as if uh, Israel yesterday attacked once more um, in the dark of night the city of Rafa where used to have perhaps uh, 150,000 uh, people living there and now is uh, well over a million, probably near two. People went from the north, as instructed, from the north of Gaza to the south. While they were moving there, they were being bombed. Now that they're there, they're being bombed there, and they have nowhere to go. We are told that uh, there is famine, there is starvation going on there. In the north, the few people who might still be in the north or in the middle of the, 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 the country, in the center of the country, have been without food for 10 days. These people are starving. They're going to die. The people in the south, most of them have been without food for about three days. All right. Now, And yet they keep bombing from above and uh, with tanks going in. I'm not going to dwell on that, on what the government is doing. That is for all of you to see. I'm just going to comment on the few the thoughts I have about the Israeli people themselves, the citizens of the nation. Because I was quite surprised, just to begin with, just to begin with the very first day after the attack by Hamas, 
uh, we were told that um, they attacked a place where young people were there attending a concert. And the concert was called a rave. Now, I know what rave means, kind of, but perhaps I'm too old now and I thought, okay, what do they actually mean by a rave? Is, is, is this just a concert or is there any other um, a, a definition attached to it? So I looked it up and apparently it's not a new word. I thought it was a new word used by young people today to signify something else. But uh, no, apparently the word uh, uh, was uh, used in the 80s to uh, talk about concerts, rock and roll concerts uh, for the most part, where young people would go and spend the night there drinking and apparently taking drugs. And uh, so I thought, okay, so uh, it could be still that type of concert or gathering. I do, I don't suppose they were playing uh, classical music. And what caught my attention was that apparently this rave was taking place practically just a few meters from Gaza, which has been described even before the war started has been described as a concentration camp. And I thought how the, the, did these young people feel to go to this, con to this concert knowing that just a few meters away there is a concentration camp there? Did, did they not know? Did they not see it? Those were my thoughts at the time. Uh, fast forward, and a few days ago, I saw uh, some videos where I, I, I don't normally watch them uh, because um, I know what is going on, so there is no point in watching these horrible things going on because it just is toxic, actually, to the soul. <laughs> but I did see this one. Israeli citizens gathering and there was one person interview demonstrating and there was one person interviewing them and I saw an older woman she could have been a grandmother she was certainly my age about my age and she was very very angry and she was saying not one single drop of water to these people not one single drop until they don't, I don't know. Okay. And she was angry and she was saying these things and I thought, what is a strange thing to say, not a drop of water, she was saying. And there were other young people around her and there was a young lad there and uh, the interviewer asked him, do you agree with this, not a drop of water? And the young teenager said, well, perhaps, uh, perhaps a quarter of a cup a day. And that's too much. A quarter of a cup, enough. I thought, my goodness. So he's got a quarter of a cup more soul than the old woman there. And now I read that... Um, the few uh, lorries or trucks or wagons that uh, are taking humanitarian aid are being blocked not only by the official authorities who always made it very difficult anyway but by Israeli citizens themselves. They are demonstrating there and not allowing humanitarian aid and a few crumbs of bread to go to these people. And I want to understand um, 
how can you be when you see people starving over there how can you be blocking the entrance of just a little bit of food to those people I don't understand it I want to understand what is going on in that person's mind brain soul During the COVID pandemic, I remember, I don't know whether you remember if you are in England, but uh, um, our government was, was, um, was uh, very uh, happy and proud that the rollout of the so-called vaccine was uh, being uh, very successful and so on. Remember? And I think we heard at the time, this is of course now three or four years, but I think I remember at the time that New Zealand was the first one to vaccinate everybody or something like that. But very, very soon after, we were told about the success in Israel, that everyone, 99% had been vaccinated and then they took the second and then the third and then all the others and I thought, my goodness I had always associated Israel with a little bit like France where, you know, people if they don't agree with something they go out into the streets and demonstrate and so on but everyone was going along with it and I thought it was unusual because there are always a few people who don't agree and go out and demonstrate. It, it wasn't happening there. And now I'm thinking about that only because there has to be a sort of a, the only way I can understand it is if I see it in terms of not just manipulation, but actually a mass psychosis or a mass whatever it is that is called nowadays when everyone is 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 is, is following something without thinking about it, just just following, just obeying something. I say this because I'm thinking, I mean I, I I cannot understand how this can be going on. Is this is this an experiment in, in 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 psychological manipulation that is going on that these people do not see the difference be, between right and wrong? Now, the Israelis are Jewish people. And the Jews, I'm Catholic, but the Jews do know the difference between right and wrong. The Jewish people know the difference between right and wrong. The Jewish people know that they have a soul. And so... I am struggling to understand how you can be blocking humanitarian aid to starving people. I thank God that there are so many Jewish people who are speaking out so that we don't confuse Zionism with 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 the religion, with Judaism. So many of them. Uh, well, I am also reading this. This is one of them. This is, you know, um, Ilan Pape. There are so many others. Um, Dr. Mate, a Canadian with his two sons. Uh, Norman Finkelstein, Finkelstein, I suppose. Um, so many of them are speaking out. But not the citizens of Israel. Um, 
have they have this have the citizens of <clears throat> have the citizens of Israel forgotten God? I know is also a secular country. I know that many of them might not care or don't believe or something like that, but that is not the point. The point is that even if you are a secular Jew, you know the difference between right and wrong. Oh, yes, you do. So what is going on here? Because this might be worse than having forgotten God. You have not only forgotten God, you're doing something much more terrible. You're spitting on his face. You are being dehumanized. Is this the antechamber to transhumanism, to the dehumanization of human beings? Before they come and put a computer chip on your brain and turn you into a robot, they have to dehumanize, dehumanize you first because you are being dehumanized. And what has happened throughout civilizations when we have become dehumanized, when we have stopped listening to our soul, and when we have forgotten God or the gods, this spiritual side of us. What has happened then? What is going to happen now to Israel? I am... I cannot believe what is happening, but it is happening. And the United States is helping the government, not the people, the government. And in Europe too, the leaders keeping quiet. Do you think that this is going to go away, that we will not remember? how over two million people were massacred? I have no words, so... This is horrendous. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.